Hey everyone, and thank you for joining us today on Energy Visionary webcast. Today we have a special guest with us and we're gonna talk about some of the pain points that a lot of our clients are calling us about in regards to their high rise condo apartment buildings or multifamily mixed use spaces in regards to their heating complaints. And my role in particular is to complete those quality control checks during construction so that we can help identify those problems before you as a building owner take occupancy of your property and are receiving these complaints. So today I wanna welcome the special guest, Mike McKenzie with Victolic. He's a hydronic system balancing specialist and he's gonna go over some of the innovative strategies that they're utilizing to prevent these problems with heating systems and cooling in your property. So welcome to Energy Visionary, Mike McKenzie. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to chat about uh, what we can do for you as a, as a building owner and uh, to make your system as efficient as possible and as, as comfortable as possible for your occupants. Excellent. And as you know, we're, uh, we're working from home today. So we are recording this during uh, COVID lockdown. So that's why we're both working remotely. Um, otherwise, we would be doing this in person. But we wanted to chat just briefly about some of the calls, like I mentioned before, of, of on the consulting side of what complaints we're getting. So typical complaints are low heat or no heat in a high rise property apartment building. And essentially what's happening is the tenants are not achieving the set point on their thermostat because the, the heating or terminal unit in that space might be airlocked and it's just not getting the hot water temperature it was designed to receive to satisfy that room space temperature. So we're going to look at some of the technical problems and then we're going to go into the, the solutions that Mike has prepared for us to to check out today. So yeah, Mike, I'll let you share your screen and we can uh, we can get into some of the technicalities of this for, for folks. Here we go. So I want to talk about avoiding energy loss and, and tenant complaints with hydronic system balancing. Uh, my name is Mike McKenzie. You can reach me at michael.mckenzie at victolic.com and by phone at 403-801-7499. And uh, I'll start right off the, the bat of, of why there's two main reasons for, for balancing your systems. And the first one is comfort. It's the, the one you're going to hear the most about from your residents and your occupants when they're too cold or when they're too hot or if there's too much noise in the system and they can't properly sleep or they can't focus on their work because everyone's working from home now. Um, so we want to be able to satisfy flow requirements and have proportional flow so that your system is as comfortable as possible for everyone in the building. And the second reason is for uh, Delta T realization and that's having the proper temperature coming back to your equipment. So your boilers, your chillers, anything like that so that they're going to, optim they're going to be optimized and work as efficiently as possible. So having proper delta t realization optimizes coil performance so at all of your terminal units so your fan coils heat pumps rating panels force flows vavs anything that's providing heating or cooling to the unit and it's going to provide the actual flow requirement for that unit it's going to eliminate overflow and under uh and this is under partial load conditions and then It'll provide uh, the ideal return temperature to your equipment so your condensing boilers can actually condense. So in your system, you're going to have your pump and your pump is going to be providing uh, pressure into the system and your water is going to flow as a function of the resistance in pipe branches. It's a very lengthy way of saying water is lazy and it's going to take the path of least resistance. So you might end up sort cycling through uh, one part of the building. 
And that's because there's the, no balancing valves in the system that are set properly. So what we'll do is we'll adjust resistance of each valve uh, on each unit here to provide the required flow rate at each unit. That's all a balancing valve is doing. It's adding resistance into the system to push the water where it needs to go. The original idea um, came about in 1953 with Torrin Argenter, which eventually became TNA balancing valves or TA balancing valves. And it was patented in 1962. So it did two things. One, you were able to set desired flow by adding resistance into the system by closing off the valve. And it provided diagnostic capabilities of understanding how much pressure is available at each part of the building. And having a properly balanced system is imperative to having uh, as low of energy consumption as possible. And it's something we don't really often think about is the impact of having a room that's too hot or too cold on our uh, energy bills. So if we're looking at heating, if we're 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit too high or one degree Celsius, you're looking at an increase of energy consumption of six to 11%. So that's pretty substantial compared to um, if you're able to achieve the proper set point for that room. So if you're hitting 21 degrees Celsius instead of 20, you are using up a substantial amount of, of power and energy costs are not getting cheaper anytime soon. So any, anywhere you can find that amount of savings is, is pretty significant. And then at cooling, it's even worse. At one degree um, Celsius or 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit too low, you're looking at 12 to 18% energy increase. And uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but one of the things we'll do is we'll do uh, an energy audit of your building. Uh, we'll take the existing conditions or an existing proposal and compare it to a different solution. Um, and we'll talk about those different solutions in a little bit and how much uh, energy savings you can, you can see per year. And in this particular example, uh, we were able to save the owner uh, just under $15,000 Canadian per year um, by just simply adding in uh, pressure independence with some uh, manual balancing valves. So that pressure independence, uh, it differs a little bit by system type. And in Alberta, we have a, a mix of, of two real systems of, of piping. You have your direct return system, which is on the left here, and reverse return on the right. Reverse return is kind of the old faithful of, of uh, piping schemes. Uh, and it's, it's really hanging on in Alberta uh, because there's a notion that reverse return is self-balancing. But for that to happen, you have to assume that all your coils are the same size and that your loads are the same and that each run of pipe is installed exactly as it was designed uh, by the engineer. If it changes during construction, it's going to have an impact on uh, how well the system operates uh, once it's been commissioned. So under reverse return system, when it's, it's self-balanced when all of the units are identical. So maybe a school where all your classrooms are typically the same size and there's a nice loop around the building, a reverse return is, is perfectly fine for that type of application. However, as soon as you get into uh, applications where there's gonna be different sized units, uh, balancing valves are required to make sure that the resistances are the same across the entire circuit so that you're not overflowing and underflowing uh, different coils and wasting energy in the process. So these partial load conditions, what I mean by that is, is an engineer will design a building for the hottest day of the year and the coldest day of the year. Every other day, we're operating under these partial load conditions. That's where control valves are closing off um, because people aren't in their rooms or in, aren't in their apartments or in their offices or uh, you're starting to reach your satisfaction point and your control valves are starting to close off because you, they don't require as much flow to, to, to meet the required temperature. So in the first uh, slide here, you have each terminal unit is set for 10 GPM. And then in the second one, terminal one, 
there's no one there, so the valve, uh, the control valve is closed off com completely. But you're seeing overflow at, at terminal two of 50%. Terminal three is starting to get close to its satisfaction point of maybe 21 degrees Celsius. So it's starting to, to close off that modulating control valve. It's supposed to be at 50% open, so it should be providing five GPM, but instead it's giving eight GPM. So we're over 50% overflowing at this unit and then 50% overflow at terminal four. So we're wasting all kinds of energy in this situation here. And then as more and more control valves close off, you're seeing the problem get worse. And this is where you're just wasting all kinds of energy and money is being literally burned by your boiler. And the overflow effects on coils, we might think that by increasing the flow uh, so if, if you're having cold spots in your building and you might have a maintenance person that goes down and, and just ramps the pump up to try to push as much flow as possible to uh, the coil that, that's not cooperating properly, what happens is you'll see a 50% increase in flow. So you're at 150% of flow. However, you're only seeing an increase of 10% in heat transfer. So you're not going to get close enough to your set point to really make the, the room comfortable for whoever's in there. And then if you keep trying, it's just going to get worse. So at 250% flow, you're only seeing an extra 20% of heat transfer at those units. So that's why it's really important to educate the people that are operating your system that having uh, your pumps just operating full bore to try to get to the, uh, the cold spots in the winter or the hot spots in the summer, it's really not going to achieve what you want it to, and you're going to be just increasing your energy consumption drastically. Uh, and it's also uh, important to bring up that once a balancing valve is set in a system, it's really important not to, to play with it after it's been set because it's been uh, set to, to achieve the proper flow rate at each coil. So with pressure independence, you're going to achieve the exact uh, temperature that you need for each unit, and you're gonna do it with as little energy as possible. So one way we can provide pressure independence into the system uh, is by adding in these differential pressure control valves. So this is a, a floor coming off of a riser and uh, we will place these on the supply and return. And what this does is it protects everything that's on the downstream side of these valves. So it, it creates independence of this circuit from whatever else is happening in the building. So uh, when you have your pump head, it's providing 60 feet of head and this circuit might only require uh, a, a pressure drop of, of 30 PSI or, or sorry, 30 feet of head for this zone. It's only gonna ever provide just enough pressure for this uh, area to, to operate efficiently. And then the rest of the pump head, so if there's an increase of, of pressure to 100 feet of head, you're not going to see a significant change in the uh, the pressure that's allowed within this circuit and it, it creates an independent zone from everywhere else in the building. So just to jump in here Mike with a quick question. So for building owner with ongoing issues of like you said short cycling hot water in one area and cold in the other they could reach out to you and essentially they would be investing in the study to get this differential pressure control system installed in their property to help alleviate where the water is flowing in their property. And that exactly. Yeah, and that essentially would lower their uh, energy costs, number one, and reduce their tenant complaints. Exactly, uh, and it does it so significantly. Um, and the, the study that we'll do is provided free of charge. There's no cost associated with the initial study. Uh, you can take it uh, and uh, go with it from there. 
but uh, it's just the, the cost of these valves and then the cost to install them. And these valves are commodity style valves, so they're priced uh, very competitively. And the overall cost to put in these valves is, is quite, quite small. Um, and it's something you can easily do in a retrofit. So we'll go through and we'll find out where you might be sort cycling um, your, your water and we'll, we'll place these valves in the most efficient places so that you're gonna see the biggest bang for your buck in terms of uh, the efficiency of the, of the building and the satisfaction of your occupants. We put these in uh, two residences at U of C about six, seven years ago. It was one of the first uh, kind of projects that we did in Alberta with, uh, with these on, on, the, uh, on the risers. And we've all been in dorms. We know that they are probably one of the worst buildings to have uh, heating and cooling in, um, especially with university students um, using maybe window sills as refrigerators and uh, things like that. By putting these in, in the two buildings that these were in, they received zero complaints from the residents in terms of uh, rooms being too hot or too cold. So it's, it's pretty, pretty substantial. And just to add to that point on a building audit. So that's also something we offer so that when we go through a property and we see that it doesn't have a balancing or pressure differential control, we can actually itemize that work with Mike and his team. And we can show you before you invest, what is the, anticipated return on investment so that exactly. you don't need to guess if you're going to be saving or not. We can show you those estimated savings based on having a properly pressure controlled system. Exactly. And, and it can be significant. One of them, it was moving from uh, fixed flow automatic valves uh, to uh, modulating pressure independent balancing and control valves. And we were able to reduce energy consumption by half. And the other one was just adding in differential pressure control valves in, uh, into a system that was already balanced with uh, just a VFD pump and uh, control valves. There's no manual balancing valves. We added manual balancing valves and the uh, differential pressure control valves. And in the first year, they saved $20,000. And, and this is just a small kind of uh, uh, mixed use professional building. So, Back to that initial design uh, slide where we're under um, pressure dependent systems and you're seeing control valves close off, you're seeing overflows on your uh, coils. And then as more and more close off, the problem gets worse and worse. So if we add a differential pressure control valve across the circuit on the supply and return, it adds in pressure independence. So each unit, each terminal unit, is now independent of everything else in the system and then everything else in the whole building. So this whole circuit is protected and then each unit is protected within, this, within the, the zone. So as the first terminal unit closes off, you're not seeing any overflows at any of the units. And then when other valves are modulating, uh, your desired flow is achieved through high control valve authority. So the control valve is doing exactly what it should be doing and it's able to open and close as efficiently as possible. The other area where we can help save money is on downsizing pipe with differential pressure control valves. In a typical reverse return loop uh, that's on your left here, you have to handle more flow right off of the back because it has to go all the way around the whole circuit. Where if we do a direct return scenario we would have two branches and you would just add in your differential pressure control valves these are often you know uh, three quarter inch one inch for heating and maybe two inch for cooling on, on the bigger side for each floor so they're not very expensive to add in but you can significantly reduce the size of pipe and oftentimes going from welded sizes or grooved sizes down to threaded sizes and the cost associated with that can be quite substantial. Uh, one project we did, factoring in the cost of the valves, we were able to save them 26% on, uh, 
on the construction costs associated to piping. So we'll, we'll help uh, locate uh, and, and place your differential pressure control valves so they're in the most efficient places possible. Uh, so it's typically one differential pressure controller per floor or branch. So it's offering an excellent performance to cost ratio because if you have a system that already has manual balancing valves with uh, control valves on your terminal units, you really only have to add these on your supply and return. You're not doing much of anything else throughout the system. So it's just two new valves per floor or per branch. But you're gaining all of the, uh, the benefits of that pressure independence. So your, your systems are running much more efficiently. So one scenario for that would be definitely if your project was in development stage, early design, or you were looking to renovate. We've had a lot of clients actually look to repurpose their space from a commercial office to a multifamily high rise. So definitely engage with either myself or Mike to have that reviewed so that you can lower your installation cost when you reduce your pipe size and your pump selection size. So those are the cost benefits just uh, punctuated there. Exactly. So uh, having your, your differential pressure control valves in your system has many, many benefits. So the first one is maximizing your control valve authority. So that's just making life easier for your control valve. So your, your control valves will last longer. Now you're not having to replace them as often because they're not working as hard anymore. It also minimizes noise. So there's much less cavitation in the system. So uh, you're able to, uh, to really reduce the, the noise pollution that can sometimes pop up from your hydronic systems. And it makes life much more comfortable for the people in your buildings. There's no proportional balancing. So in a, in a typical setup, a balancer would have to proportional balance. So that means they're touching every balancing valve in their system multiple times before it's properly balanced. With this type of system, as soon as it's set, uh, you don't ever have to go back and touch it again. So the, uh, the balancer can get through and they can uh, commission the building a lot faster and a lot more efficiently. So you're getting much more life out of your warranty on your equipment because uh, equipment warranty starts when the uh, when the piece lands on site not when you get uh, the building turned over to you and so, as a quality control point like i mentioned as part of my job is to review installations and collect that data and reporting that the building was commissioned properly you guys would provide that documentation saying that it is installed, the capillary tube is attached, and it is functioning as designed. Because that's the biggest problem we see. We might design a system, but due to a rush in construction or changeover in personnel near the end, these things get missed, you know. So definitely exactly. worthwhile getting getting something that's a little more simpler for the contractor and the whole team to have it completed before you occupy a property. Exactly. And then once the, the building is occupied, there's no rebalancing that has to happen when new sections are added. So uh, if you're doing uh, staged occupancy for uh, your apartment buildings or your condo buildings, uh, this allows you to get people into the building sooner. So you can start uh, getting some revenue from them while you're finishing the rest of the building. And then it, you don't have to go back and rebalance the, uh, the part that's been occupied already. Or if you're planning a future expansion, having these uh, in, in the system means that you don't have to go back and rebalance everything else in the building like you would typically have to do. And then there's no rebalancing when pumps are changed. So when your pumps reach the end of their life, and they have to be replaced. Typically, uh, you would have to then go back through and rebalance everything because the pumps are going to be different. They're gonna be providing different, uh, different pressures into the system. So you would have to go through then and rebalance the entire system. With this, you don't have to do that because each valve is set for the pressure and the flow rate that's required for each zone, and it protects it from whatever else is happening 
in your uh, in your building. So it's a set it and forget it kind of uh, situation. And just to jump in, that this is all mechanical mechanisms, correct? There's no electronics. That capillary uh, wire in between is mechanical. There's no uh, electronics required. So you're not using energy costs on that. Exactly. This is all mechanical. Uh, so that what this capillary tube is, tube is doing is it, it's filling with water. And then the bonnet on, on the valve here will fill with water from the supply side. And then once it's filled, it doesn't see any flow. So the lifespan of these valves are quite long and uh, it, it does not see any, uh, any flow and there's no wiring or anything else like that that's going to add uh, to your energy consumption. What is the expected life, life cycle of this type of equipment and what type of warranties would a client be looking at? So typically it's uh, your standard product warranty for the valves itself. And then the lifespan of the valve really depends on water quality. Um, if it's a uh, closed system that's been properly um, flushed and degreased and, and maintained, uh, these valves can last a significant amount of time. We're, I've been in this role for eight years now, and we haven't had to go and replace any existing differential pressure control valves in my tenure here you can expect a, a significant lifespan out of these valves as long as the water is properly treated. If you're pushing glue through the pipe, it's not going to last quite as long. <laughs> yeah, no, good point there. Right. Uh, so uh, another uh, thing that this uh, type of system really helps with is overflow and cavitation. So overflow means that water velocity is higher than expected uh, based off of the design. And when water velocity is too high, it leads to erosion in pipe elbows, heat exchangers, uh, coils. Uh, I know there's a few projects in Calgary where um, we're having to replace uh, the coils and in, in your fan coils because the water is just pushing so fast through them because the system isn't properly balanced that they're replacing coils on a pretty regular basis. The other so, thing, that, just to jump in on some of this terminology, how it equates to a property owner is damage to equipment and possible leaks or floods in your property. So I know water damage is one of the leading causes of insurance claims. And this is what we're talking about when we say cavitation or high velocity in piping. You're basically wearing away the equipment too fast and exactly. it'll break basically and start flooding all over your property. So that's exactly. how that relates to these technical terms. <laughs> so you'll get these nice, nice, not so pinholes on your, uh, on your coils. On the end of a coil. Like yeah. And uh, then it just starts spewing water everywhere and you end up with uh, a big insurance claim. Uh, so having a properly balanced system with pressure independence uh, greatly reduces this almost to nothing. Uh, so you're going to have a much longer lifespan out of all of your very expensive equipment. Uh, and then with control valves, an overflowed circuit, so when water is just rushing through the system, trying to satisfy uh, the, the temperature in your far off uh, reaches of your building, they end up operating with very short open-close cycles. So your actuators will open-close, open-close, open-close. And what that does is it, it really uh, cuts the lifespan of those valves down to almost nothing. So you end up having to replace your control valves on a pretty regular basis as well. When you have proper control valve authority and there's no overflow and very little cavitation in the system, uh, your, your control valves will, will last much, much longer. So we have a few different options. Uh, one of them is for high differential, differential pressure control valves. So uh, these are the, just the two different options that we have, the Pilot R and the DA516. And their applications are for district heating and cooling. Uh, so you're putting these on the entrance to each building, <clears throat> as opposed to maybe installing very expensive uh, and large heat exchangers to decouple the building. You can do the same thing with, uh, with two much less expensive valves. Uh, they're great for high-rise towers, 
for uh, you know parts of the buildings that are right off of the pump so that are going to see the highest amount of pressure but each floor may only need to see a little bit of pressure to operate properly or for your large footprint institutional work like uh, hospitals and uh, larger schools <clears throat> so uh, this is a local example here it's the University of Calgary Health Sciences building uh, they were having uh, issues with uh, the the district uh, cooling system and they're just seeing way too much pressure in this building so we were able to install uh, the pilot hours here and since then it hasn't been an issue uh, for for them there so the uh, the two ways you can get pressure independence into your systems are uh, shown here. So the first option is with your differential pressure control valve and just the partner valve. With existing manual balancing valves or we're adding these in if they're not already there. And then your, your two-way control valves. So nothing in this is very expensive. It's all very standard stuff um that we we know every day the only addition are these two uh, valves at the bottom here on your supply and return and this will provide pressure independence for this whole zone the second option is by putting pressure independent balancing and control valves everywhere uh, this is an option that has become more popular <clears throat> um, but these valves are uh, very expensive and you're having to add valves at each unit to make sure that you're getting your uh, your pressure independence. So our two options are the compact P or the modulator. So what they do is they're combining pressure independence, balancing and control into one valve. So it makes uh, commissioning that much easier and uh, it can provide either modulating or on off options depending on uh, what type of building you're, you're running. And our valves are one of the few that will provide field flow measurements and adjustment uh, for the flow rate. So your, your diagnostic capabilities are much higher with this valve compared to maybe some of the other pick fees that, that are out there. Space requirements as well. A lot of high rise condos we work on, if you had all those valves you had to cram into a space, it's, it's very tight. Having that combination really saves a lot of space and square footage for the property yeah. owner. Yes, exactly. And the name, the name is, is fitting the compact P. This is, this is the one that has really uh, took off in the last year in Alberta for our multifamily residential. We've sold roughly 6,000 units this year of compact P. Uh, so that's your on off application. And the reason for that is it's nice and compact. You're commissioning your building a lot faster and uh, you're getting the exact flow rate for each unit. So you're not over pumping your uh, your system so the compact p uh, pressure class of 230 psi so any any building that we're dealing with uh, 230 psi is generally well within the range and then uh, temperature range of, of 32 degrees fahrenheit to 194 so typically your condensing boilers are running much lower than that um, so they're good for any heating system in uh, in alberta and then this shows the flow rates for the sizes. And this is how they're set. So each valve position from one to 10, and then there's uh, you know unlimited positions in between, will provide a certain flow rate. So if you were to try to use a, uh, a fixed flow valve, they, they'll come with a cartridge, an automatic balancing valve. They'll come with a cartridge, and the cartridge will give you a set flow rate. So it might give you 2.7 GPM. So it's going to put you somewhere between five and six, but maybe you just need 2.5 GPM. So instead of overflowing by, uh, you know, the, the two, uh, two tenths of a, of a gallon, you're giving them exactly the flow rate they need. So you're not wasting any, any energy. So these can come as part of a coil kit that we provide. Uh, these are perfect for maintenance. So it has everything that you need to maintain your coil all in one nice concise package. So you have your strain or drain with isolation, your PT port, your hoses. And the nice thing with these hoses is it allows for that thermal uh, expansion and contraction in the system. So if this was a hard piped copper, 
it's going to become a weak point as your uh, equipment moves. Over time, that will create uh, problems at your joints here, and you'll you'll start to see leaks if this were to be done with with hard copper. Having the flexible hoses, it allows for that movement and it extends the lifespan of uh, of the piping around your units. So you're not going to see uh, as many leaks on your uh, on your on your equipment. Just to add to your point there, all of those joints there are union tight. So really easy for a maintenance personnel to isolate it and open it up and check if there's anything, you know, debris that might have been caught in there. But that's what we've had for feedback from our building owners is, is the maintenance portion of this is very simple to use. And just to add to Mike's point, we've had a lot of calls from property owners that have had leaks from rigid copper piped coil units. And this has been one of the uh, the best solutions for that problem. And, and it makes it nice because all of your isolation points are within 24 inches of your unit. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not having to hunt for a ball valve to be able to shut your unit down. You're able to drain right there and everything is, is nice and easy to uh, gain access to. So just some pictures of what they might look like in, uh, in the wild. So it, you can see how everything is nice and clean to each of the unit. So back to the energy study that we talked about at the beginning. Now that's done through our engineering services center. So uh, what we'll do is we'll take drawings and they could be uh, anywhere from 60% uh, of design all the way to having been built and commissioned 50, 60 years ago. We'll do a complete hydronic balancing takeoff for all of the balancing valves required for the system. We'll provide schematic drawing revisions of where we might find uh, more cost-effective ways of, of routing the pipe, as opposed to maybe doing a reverse return system to a direct return system. Uh, we'll do the sizing and placement of all your balancing valves. We'll make sure that they're all properly sized so they're easier to set, and it extends the lifespan of the, of the valves. Uh, one of the biggest issues is sometimes you'll see a three quarter inch balancing valve uh, trying to regulate uh, flow for a radiant panel. That radiant panel might only be seeing 0 0.05 liters per second. So almost no flow whatsoever. So to try to do that with a three quarter inch balancing valve means that you're, you're closing that valve almost completely off. So it essentially becomes a strainer. And it uh, will add noise into the system and uh, because there's so much change in the, in the valves, so because it's all the way closed, it adds cavitation into the system. So that valve won't last nearly as long as it should. And then we'll draw attention to errors and possible issues and giving alternative solutions. We'll provide uh, valve presetting values for faster commissioning. For the differential pressure control valves, uh, we'll optimize uh, control valve authority and ensure correct uh, delta T to all of your equipment so that again your condensing boilers may actually condense and we'll uh, we'll place all of these valves as well really helps um, mitigate the number of valves in the system because they might not necessarily need to be everywhere they may only need to be in certain key places and then we'll provide a pump head optimization so that your pumps are sized properly and they're operating on the proper curve, so we're not wasting energy at our pump. And we're not putting in too big of a pump uh, just for safety. Um, we can give you the actually uh, proper sized pump, so it, it limits on the, the cost of equipment as well. Just to jump in, so a client interested in, in this service, the Engineering Services Center, typically they would, like, he's, like you mentioned, you're in the design or development stage, or you have an older existing property, you've had issues, and you have a bit of funds to complete some energy efficiency investments, this would be perfect for that as a starting point as well. Exactly, it can be any, anywhere in the process from cradle to grave. Um, we can, we can uh, join at any point in the process. And the nice thing too, is once we do the review, we, we make sure that we, we keep uh, uh, all of the data. 
So if we do a review for you and uh, you uh, install the valves everywhere and uh, something changes in the building, say you're, you're moving from uh, just water to a glycol mix, typically you'd have to go back through and rebalance the entire system. What you would do is you would come to, uh, to us, you would give us uh, the new um, makeup of, of what's in the water, and we'll do an, a reanalysis of it and then provide all the presetting values for the valves. So then all someone has to do is go through and, and properly set all the valves again. So there's no guesswork involved with uh, setting the, the, the system once you make your changes. Excellent. And Victolix, a uh, hundred year old company, so they're not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> exactly. And uh, we'll also help with uh, pipe size optimization as well. So that we'll make sure that the pipe is as small as possible, but also that it's sized properly so that you're not seeing too much uh, velocity through the pipe so that your pipe uh, lasts longer. So you're not having to do your midlife rusher fits too early. So this is the software that we use. We'll go through, we'll uh, choose the proper sized valves based off of flow and pressure drop. Then we'll place the valves at key points in the building. So with this one, uh, the, the solid dots are differential pressure control valves. <clears throat> and then the bullseye ones are your pressure independent balancing control valves. And we'll do this so that it limits the amount of, uh, of valving in the system. Then we'll provide a full valve schedule. So this will be every balancing valve in the system complete with all the presetting turns for the, uh, for the handles of the valves. This is given to basically anyone that wants to see it. So owners, engineers, mechanical contractors, the balancing contractor. And then once this is given to the balancing contractor, it's loaded into uh, our uh, balancing scope and almost all of the, uh, the balancing uh, contractors worth their salt will be using a, uh, a TA scope uh, for its ease of use for when they're balancing their system. And it'll be loaded into the into the their tool already. They'll go into room 101. It'll say that it's a half inch uh, TA balancing valve set to 3.5 turns and it's expecting uh, two GPM of flow. They would go plug in their, their scope, measure flow, hit save, and then you're going to get a fully digital and confirmed balancing report from the balancing contractor so that you know for certain that your system is properly balanced. And you're not going to run into those problems of cold zones, hot zones, um, or you know, uh, equipment short cycling because the system wasn't properly balanced to begin with. And I know a lot of clients might have an existing property and they might not have accurate record drawings. So that's one of the services we would offer as the consultant is we would go in and we would create detailed as built or records of your space to work in conjunction with uh, Mike and his team to complete a full plan of attack for the contractor to get this done properly. Exactly. And then these are just some details of, of what would uh, look like on, on your drawings. So you would have your differential pressure control valves or your pressure independent balancing control valve at each terminal unit. So just two, two different ways of, of gaining pressure independence so you can reap as much uh, energy consumption uh, benefits as possible and to have as comfortable as possible a building for your occupants. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Um, if anyone wants to reach out to myself or Mike, if they've had ongoing issues or they would like us to take a look at their property, you can just reach out and we can jump on a call like this and review the space you have and, and listen to the issues that you're currently experiencing. So definitely reach out. It's a worthwhile investment to lower your energy costs, increase your uh, tenant quality of life, and reduce those complaints. So thanks again, Mike. Appreciate you taking the time to show us this technology.
thanks for having me. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email address is on the screen there, michael.mckenzie at victaulet.com. Or you can reach me on my cell at 403-801-7499. Thanks so much. Excellent.